Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here. Welcome to another video on the channel. Been out doing some shooting this morning and at this time of year for me it would normally be an invasive species like grey squirrel. Hazelnuts and other fruits like beech nuts are coming in to ripen and uh, even before they're ripe the squirrels hammer them and they litter the floor with unripened cracked fruit and um, other animals suffer because of it. And uh, this morning I turned up early and the landowner asked me whether I could take a brown hare for him. Uh, they can be pest species when they get in high numbers like they are here and I went out this morning fairly early and took myself a brown hare over the far side of the woodland and I've got it just here in front of me. It's a rarity for me to take a brown hare and it's a very large animal in comparison to what I normally shoot much like a big rabbit and dressed in the same way and um, they're very interesting creatures and uh, I'm very fond of them actually. In this case, in this video, I'm going to show you how I dress an animal like this and because of its size and weight Normally I would hang it up because it's quite heavy, you can roll it around in the dirt. So I've propped something up just over here, a stake in this log stack here outside where I can put it through the tendons in the back legs, hang it up and dress it quite easily. So let's get started. First thing I will do is get the urine out of it like I would a rabbit. And I can already see by this, it looks like we have blood in the urine. You just need to run your hand down like this as you would a rabbit. Yeah, and I can see there is some dark red blood in the urine just there at the back, but not too much coming out. So this is really why you want to get it dressed quick. I've used a shotgun, not a clean gun really in a way, a clean tool. So it would have caused a lot of damage inside and uh, the quicker we get this dressed, the better. I'm using my small neck knife today. I always carry this when I go hunting. Or well, just out on walks or small trips is a useful little knife to carry. But before I dress the animal, I'm just going to run it on the stone. Just make sure it's completely sharp. And also have a strop on me as well. Which you can just ensure that your knife's got a sharp edge if you haven't done already, as I didn't have time this morning. You can look at the edge looking good, shaving sharp, should be ready to go. I'm just going to take the back legs and we can see there we have a, a thick tendon there and I'm just going to face the blade away from me, make an incision and then go down as well. So I can put my finger through and I'll do it on both legs. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can put a stick through it and just hang it up and work with it pretty easily and a stick will hold in there quite nicely. I've just got to make sure the stick's strong enough to hold such a weight I've jammed this piece of hazel in and just strapped it up and hopefully it'll be strong enough. It's a flexible wood hazel, so it's not ideal for this. But hopefully it should be able to support the weight of this. You can see it's bending very slightly. The closer we get it to here, the better it'll be should be good enough. So I'm going to get the skin and the fur off first because I don't want to get lots of blood all over it. Even though it can come out in the tanning process, it's good to keep the hide fairly clean. And uh, you can see I've already stripped back one leg. It's fairly simple really. You just really need a knife to start things off. Just pinching the skin. And it can just start to come off very easily. You shouldn't really even need to use a knife. You can see it's all just starting to come off. It was hit on the back end as well. So I've just got to be a little bit careful. You can see that leg has been hit a little bit hard actually and it broke one of the tendons that, that came away. Um, so I've got a, a little bit of work to do around there. But through most of this process, you should just be able to use your hands much like you would a rabbit. but it won't come away quite as easily as a rabbit, that's for sure. And if you're having difficulty at any point, you can just use your knife to free things up.
and it's starting to come away now so I'm getting away from that area which is good lots of pellets too, you can feel them so I can get my fingers round there now, I've just worked the skin off down both legs just ringed round the top and freed it up started coming down, just taking it all off can just take that out there it should just start to come off quite nicely but you can see a lot of this clotting here starting to begin where um, it was shot I'm just going to work my hand around the back as well and so it's starting to free up do is we'll just ring rem here as well so when we get to this point the skin will come off really easily I'm not too worried about preserving anything around there you can see it comes up the arm now just try not to be too forceful with your knife on the bone there we are really at the point where everything's just come off very easily we can pull that arm up there like that but obviously we have a, a pore in the way and that pore needs to be taken off ideally now what I try and do if I can avoid it especially the way I'm working here is avoid snapping the bone they're really sharp and you can cut yourself really easily which you don't want to do if you don't have gloves like me at this point so you can actually joint the animal by looking at where it hinges there on that limb and just bringing your knife in but I try not to force my knife in because uh, you'll just damage the edge of the blade so you tend to just dig your knife in a little bit and open that up once you get through you don't need to force it in any way and then there's just tendon and it pops off you see we'll do the other one see it hinging just there so obviously that at that point just here just bring the knife in to get some of that skin out of the way just like that you just want the blade just to really be just to be touching the actual cartilage and just nipping through until it until the joint comes apart fairly naturally just like that and then the arms will actually come out now it pops off it's a fairly clean clean area where it's been jointed you can see that so we don't have to worry too much about our hands going near it we don't have sharp bone there do the same on the other one now. Just like that. So there you go. Again, no worries about getting cut. So everything's passed, the majority. We've got a bit of fat. We just need to get the head off now, get the actual fur off. Sometimes you can get it off the head, it's tricky though, easier on squirrels.
and just get the rest away from there. And that's it, that's all the fur. Lots of blood, sadly, but it's the way it goes when you use a messy gun. And that's coming off now. I doubt we'll get it off though. Try and use your hands to. No, the neck's going to break. Come straight off. What I'll do is I'll admit defeat. Just going to take that straight off there like that. So now we've got this fur in like a, a bit of a sock. Just turn it inside out like that. And roll it in a ball because we want to keep it damp. We don't have to worry about the weather too much. But if it was a really warm day, we'd have problems with this drying out. I've experienced issues in the past with that. It's just something you have to contend with depending on where you live in the world but we'll keep that like that keep it moist and then what we'll do and we'll get home I'll roll it up into a bit of a tighter ball put it in a bag it will go in the freezer and then it will keep and when I've got time I can then tan it so I'm just going to pop that in my game bag and um, that'll be saved for later so now that we've slit the neck a lot of the blood's come out we're going to need to take the head off anyway so I've cleared away some of the flesh on the neck there and you can see the vertebrae. We don't want to actually just take our knife and dig it in and ruin our edge. So you can see a gap there. We just put our knife in and just pop it through and it comes straight apart like that. So we're just avoiding any stress on the edge. Now it's time for the guts. We just want to make a very small incision and put our finger through like that. We don't actually want to penetrate the gut. So if you lift the skin away with your finger like that, I'll use my other hand so you can see, you can avoid slashing anything. But obviously all the guts are coming out now, we don't want to punch those. And we can just pull those out like this. And it should all disconnect and come out. This is the liver. So if we look at the liver, you always want to inspect the liver of an animal. This one looks okay. There's a few white blemishes all over it actually. Not looking particularly healthy. Have the kidneys just here at the back as well. You can eat the kidneys, so we can we can hang on to those. Now we've got everything out of there, the guts, the kidneys, the liver, we've got the diaphragm. We can puncture the diaphragm. You don't actually need to use a knife, but you can. And deep down in there will be what produces a lot of blood when it gets hit. It's the lungs and the heart. And the heart is edible. I don't normally eat the lungs, but some people do. Uh, you can give them to a dog if you have one. But we'll keep the heart as well. And the rest can just be pulled out and cleared up. I can see straight down through the rabbit. I can put my finger through there actually. It's obviously quite a clear hole. It goes all the way through like that. It's nice and clean. We don't need to split down the ribs just yet. It really depends on what we do with the rabbit, but obviously with the hair, sorry. But what we've got to do now is clean the back end. And I'm going to take this off, split the pelvis there and get all the feces out and just clean it up. So we can open this up. There's a little parcel. Put the kidneys, put the liver in. There won't be too many flies. Now the rain's kicking in. Obviously that will keep the flies off of them. And you've got everything there. That can just go in the game bag. But what we've got to do is clean this up a little bit on the back end. Just going to open this up here like that. I'm not going to touch the bone. You can just get your knife and crack it like that, but that knife's too nice to be treated in such a way. My other knife's a lot tougher, my Fieldmaster knife, and you could actually do it with that. I'm not really worry too much when I have done in the past but you can see we actually have no access to the uh, faecal canal 
which I ripped out and it's all gone it's all clean you just got to watch these bones they're going to be they're going to be razor sharp so we can just clean that up And that's basically it, it's all cleaned up. Obviously we've still got the back legs on, but I've got no problem keeping those for the time being. Gives me something to hold on to. So you get a lot more meat out of one of these than you do a rabbit. And uh, this is probably will be one of the last times I ever take one of these in my life. I don't, I don't really say I'm comfortable with it. And, uh, but the landowner will obviously have what he wants and I will eat it make a stew out of it or something, I'll take it home, see what Megan fancies doing with it. But now I need to get cleaned up, obviously. This is the thing about dressing an animal in a not so ideal environment. A lot of the time when I'm out, I look for water, running water, like a river or something along those lines to, to dress something near. You do have to contend with flies sometimes. So you have to pick your area. I'm not talking about still stagnant water where you're just gonna disturb eggs and things will start flying out at you. I mean like a nice river with rocks and something running well. And then you can wash this off in the river too. Or just keep it like that really, it depends what you want to do with it. But I'm going to get this transported back. I've got to carry it, it's got, I've got nowhere to put it. I wasn't after these today, I was after grey squirrel. Um, well that's what I thought I was after anyway. So I'm going to make my way back, I'm going to go to my vehicle. I've got some, uh, some things I can put it in. And I'll leave it there for the rest of the day while I'm out. And obviously put the hide in there too and um, take it home and it should be good. And uh, maybe you'll join me in another video and I'll show you how to cook something like this. Maybe out in the woods, maybe in the, the kitchen. We'll see, depends what uh, Megan feels is best to do with it. I'll leave it in her hands. But thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I'll see you very soon in another one. Take care.